I mean, I never really thought about doing anything else. I started very, very young from what my parents told me, and I, as much as I recollect, uh, when I was a little kid, uh, illustrations were at, at their very peak. I mean, uh, many, many more magazines than we have today, all of them lavishly illustrated. And uh, when I started showing a little interest in art, what I looked at were the magazines. But I have the same background, actually, as all the other people that you'll be talking to, because we all be, started out as illustrators. I tell anybody that asks me that if you take two years of art school and get the grounding and learn a little color theory and learn how to draw to the degree that you can be taught and uh, some notions of composition, that's all you need to know. If you've got the talent, you'll do fine. If you don't, lots more teaching is not going to help you. But I had sort of established that I could sell easel paintings very much like I was doing as an illustrator, but uh, except I was the art director. Actually, my first one-man show was before I quit uh, illustrating uh, in 1965 in New York, and it, I made the mistake of picking the night of the great blackout. So I had brought in a caterer, I had everything set, and three minutes before the show opened, all the lights in New York went out. <laughs> However, we had, a, uh, we had a mini show because the art department was one floor above the camping department, and people drifted down to the camping department and came up with Coleman lanterns and all kinds of stuff, and were going around holding the lanterns, looking at the paintings, eating my hors d'oeuvres, swiping the spirits. In the, <laughs> the next day, the lights were back on, and I did very well at the show, and uh, that just reinforced my idea that uh, maybe I could make a living doing fine, so-called fine art. My subject then and now has, has always been animals for no particular reason except that I enjoyed painting them. I felt I had a little empathy toward them. Uh, I think it's a little cowardly really because I think I can paint a halfway decent landscape and, and some things other than animals, but I'm very secure. I feel safe amongst my animals. and. Uh, I, I, as I grow older, I feel like I might be the, the, the big guy on the block in my little pond rather than one of a hundred really good landscape painters, for instance. This, of course, is a, you might say this is a trite subject that's been done many times, but it's, I love it because, I, number one, I love to hear lions roaring. And I've been in Africa at this time of day. I think I'm going to call it first light because often when you're cruising around and you do get out early, as often as not, uh, if you you will hear lions roaring. It's I don't know whether they're welcoming the day or whether they're communicating with their chums or what, but it's a it's a time when they do sound off, and it's just the most beautiful music. Uh, I think the color might be a little bit forced, but I want it tells it, it, it sets the mood that I want to set. As I grow older, I I do what I want to do. And and if I cheat a little bit, who cares? Number one, most of the time nobody knows it but me. I'm not taking a photograph, I'm making a painting, and it's my painting, and I can do anything I want. And uh, I I also have a theory that I, and I really believe this, that realism is honored in the breach. By that I mean, I think where you, where you cheat on the facts is where you become an artist, not where you record the facts. Anybody can record the facts. But when you t have your facts in front of you and you say, I know that's the way it is, but that's not the way I want it in my painting, and then you do something that a that augments the, the color or the texture or the excitement of the painting, then you're functioning as an artist. If you're simply putting down what you see, you're, you may be a great craftsman, but you ain't an artist. One of the little devices that I frequently use is kind of a little, uh, rather casual it seems, uh, application of a wolf pencil, which is a carbon pencil, 
simply to sort of uh, emphasize hair textures. Uh, I, I don't like to overdo it, but there are times when just a little sense of the roughness of the hair uh, is all you need, and rather than take a tiny little brush, which I don't own, and going picky picky, I, to me it has a little more spontaneity if you just simply take this charcoal thing and, and make your little accents and let it go with that. Or a little of roughness within the a shape of a tree, whatever, wherever you feel. And often, in a, if there, if I paint a some brush with leaves in it, uh, I'll just go, you know, which just catches just a little bit of the darkness that's in amongst all the, the green. There's also a lot of shadows. It just it gives gives you a little sense of texture. I think you you learn certain basic ideas, uh, concepts of what makes. A, a good composition and then over time you probably evolve your own notions of what a good composition is and uh, mine is so intuitive I mean if I'm painting a picture whatever my original plan is if if as I go along I feel that the shapes in the painting are such that I need an element opposing let's say the flow of the painting Nobody told me that. I just, I just sense that, that something needs to be there. So then I have to figure out what can I put there. Do I take a sponge and drip it down the painting, which I've been known to do? Do I uh, look up shrubbery and try to find some form that takes me back up where my instinct says something ought to go up there? Or I'm only being arbitrary. They can do and go in any direction, but this is the way it works with me. And uh, and uh, so what I'm really saying is that I think you you can learn how to m make tolerable designs, but you can't learn how to make great designs. You, you got to be a designer, and you have to have an instinct for how to move shapes around your painting. You cannot paint things that that get catch the character of a critter if you don't know the critter and uh, so I, I'm one of those old-fashioned people that really feels you ought to put in your time at the zoo I'm absolutely wedded uh, to acrylic and it, the reason I am is because I worked as an illustrator for roughly 25 years and, or more than that really uh, and I was always using a very quick drying medium. In those days, it was Winsor Newton uh, uh, designer's colors, which are very fast drying. And so uh, the, uh, the uh, transition to acrylic was natural. I'm not comfortable with oil. I'd, I know that acrylic has problems. It dries very fast. However, there are many ways of skinning a cat, and there's a lot of ways you can uh, get around the quick drying. You can wet the surface. You can go back over forever. It's totally fast. You can roller skate on it after you finish, and you're not going to hurt it. This gang is very tight, and you know, very shortly after we moved here, we knew them all. And the best part of it is, it's one thing if the fellows like each other, but if the wives like each other, then you've got a group, and we have a group. <laughs>